welcome to my channel. My name is Alex. I am a nurse from Melbourne, Australia. As the title of this video suggests, I'm getting a breast augmentation. I thought it would be a cool idea to film my journey. If there was a few of you out there that were considering breast augmentation surgery, you could, you know, follow my journey and see what I went through, what's involved, and I thought it would be a fun thing to do. So I've been a nurse for three years now, um, and of those three years I have worked in plastic surgery. So this is all, you know, sort of normal stuff to me. I see it every single day. It's something that I am passionate about and something that I love, so I'm super, super excited to be, you know, having my own surgery done. So I used to work for a plastic surgeon in his consulting rooms doing post-op reviews and dressings and things like that. And now I am working on a ward um, where I will have my surgery, looking after patients immediately after their surgery. My mum is also a theatre nurse and a surgeon's assistant for the plastic surgeon that I am going to. She's worked with him for 24 years or something, like my whole life. So he's basically a second dad to me. So. I feel super, super comfortable going to him. I'm so excited. The surgeon that I've chosen to go to is Craig Rubenstein. He is one of the best. He specializes in breasts and abdos. He actually works at the hospital where I work at. So every day I'm looking after all of these patients and seeing his amazing results. So, you know, I wouldn't go anywhere else. The patients are always comfortable. They look amazing, they feel amazing. So, you know, going to Craig was an obvious choice for me. Not only because, you know, I see his results, but I have known him my whole life. So, you know, I know him as a person as well and I feel so comfortable with my decision. It's gonna be a really good experience and I'm really excited to bring you guys along and answer any questions that you might have. So tomorrow I am going to my appointment. Craig and I will discuss implants, you know, below the muscle, above the muscle, teardrop round, all those things. Um, and then I will vlog, you know, what we spoke about and let you guys know. Then we'll choose a date for the surgery and yeah, go from there. I'm gonna ask one of the nurses in my operation to film bits and pieces of my surgery. Obviously, I won't put up the really graphic stuff, but I thought it would be sort of cool for you guys to see the inside of a theatre um, and some little things that Craig does to make sure my surgery goes, you know, according to plan, you know, no infections, good results, all those type of things. And I will vlog after my operation and my recovery. I might do, you know, the next few days after my surgery, a week after, two weeks after, a month after, and then maybe the eight week mark and just show you guys what they're looking like. Um, I think, yeah, that would be pretty cool. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you so much for, you know, deciding to watch it. Um, it means a lot to me. You know, I can tell I'm gonna put a lot of work into this video. So I hope that it is beneficial and interesting and teaches you guys some things. So guys, I am in the car on the way to my consult with Craig. Um, I'm so excited, honestly. Um, I'll check back in with you guys afterwards and let you know what we spoke about, but um, it's just all starting to feel so real now. Um, I'm super excited, so I'll um, let you guys know what implant and size and, you know, that I chose and what we spoke about. So, yes, check back in with you guys soon. So guys, I have so much to fill you in about. Um, we booked a date, which is super, super exciting. Um, it's on the 28th of November, um, so that's about a month and a half away. So I'm sure it'll come up really quickly. And the good thing is I will be completely healed by summer. Um, so that is super awesome. And so I know my anaesthetist and the assistant for the day, um, and I'm super, super excited. Um, they are amazing. So, oh, I'm in such good hands. Um, all of Craig's assistants and anaesthetists are amazing, um, so I would have been happy with any of them, but I guess knowing who I'm having makes it feel so much realer and I'm so excited. So I got to my consult and I filled out a form to say, you know, who I was, all my 
details, um, if I'd had any previous operations and things like that. So then when I went in, um, Craig assessed me um, and then we spoke about, you know, my goals, what I wanted and what was realistic. He then explained the procedure to me, um, the risks involved, even though, you know, the rate of complications is really low, um, it's still super, you know, important for you to be aware of, you know, what could potentially happen, you know, when you go ahead with anything like that. So, obviously, I decided to go ahead because Craig's amazing. Um, I have, you know, full faith in him, um, trust him with my life, quite literally, so... Yes. So then I went into another room and they have this machine called a Vectra. And what that is, is it takes a 3D photo of you and it projects, you know, bigger boobs on you. Um, so you can see from all angles what you would sort of look like with the size implant that you chose. And then lastly, I went into another room and spoke with a lady about dates, which was the most exciting part. And um, I booked myself in. Craig did send me home with some implants to, you know, sort of have a look and play with. Um, there's so many different types of implants out there. So the implant that I chose is a 295 Motiva Ergonomic High Profile Implant. It feels really nice and soft, but then at the same time, it's nice and plump. Um, I've seen a lot of other implants that sort of aren't as full as this one, so... I really really like it. It's not textured. Um, Craig doesn't use textured implants. There is a cancer um, associated with textured implants. So that's another reason why it is so important to go to an accredited plastic surgeon who will explain all these things to you. So do your research before picking a surgeon, okay? I already have some breast tissue, so I'm already about a size V, I think. Um, I don't wear bras because I don't need to. So I'm sort of guessing I'm a size B. So this and then my breast tissue will be a really nice size. I also chose to go under the muscle. Um, Craig and me personally both think that it looks more natural and gives a more beautiful result. It's personal preference really. Craig doesn't do above the muscle. Um, but I know that there are people out there that do. So just research, you know, the risks involved with going above the muscle. Obviously, there's not as much support holding the implant. So, you know, you might need a breast lift in the future if you go above the muscle. I'll show you up closer the implant that I chose. So I don't know if you can really tell... Um, that it's more of a matte finish and see how I hold it, it stays really plump. Um, that's the back of it, so it's a 295. Oh, also, it won't be purple when it goes in my body. This is just a sizer um, so that you can have a look and see, you know, what 295 actually looks like. Um, the real one will be clear. And, you know, people think that, you know, implants are really easy to rupture. Well, you know, I can literally do anything to this and, like, it's not going to burst. And if it does, it's a cohesive gel, so it won't spread out through my breast cavity. So that's that one. Um, now, implant shapes. There are two types of implants. There are round and teardrop. Craig will only use round. Um, personally, I don't know why you would want to get a teardrop implant. The whole reason I'm getting implants is so I have cleavage, like upper pole fullness. Whereas with the teardrop, it this isn't a teardrop implant, but it's more flat, it's flat at the top. So up here there's nothing and then it's full down here. I want cleavage. I think most people that get a boob job want that cleavage. So don't get, don't get teardrop. <laughs> also the risk with having teardrops is that they can rotate in the capsule. So then all of a sudden this flat bit is down here and it's all bulging out the side or I don't know, like I would never get them. <laughs> a lot of people think they have to get a really huge implant to get the result they want. Um, it's not necessarily true. You know, sometimes implants are put in that are too big for the breast pocket and then they, you know, come out under the armpit or 
you know, there's just so many more risks involved if you get an implant that is too big for your body. Like, I honestly cannot stress the importance of doing research on the difference between plastic and cosmetic surgeons. I would only go to a plastic surgeon um, who is accredited. At work, we do have patients come through that have gone overseas or have gone to cheaper places and then they end up coming to Craig to get them fixed up. I'd rather just have one surgery and have it done perfect, but each to their own. Um, I know financials is a big thing, but you pay for what you get. So they're obviously cheaper for a reason. Think about it. Oh, yes. But my little purple motiva one, I just think it's so cute. I've just been carrying it around all day. Um, oh, I love it. So here's a closer look at the implants. The top two are the textured and the bottom two are the smooth. And this little cute purple one is the one that I chose. Motiva are just so beautiful. So on the day of surgery, I will get to the hospital and I will be fasting from midnight. So you can't have anything to eat or drink for eight hours before surgery. So from midnight, the, de the night of my surgery, um, I won't eat or drink anything. Um, it's super, super important when having a general anesthetic that you have been fasting for eight hours. Um, because there's complications such as aspiration and you know other things when you go to sleep. A good anaesthetist will call you before your surgery and explain to you why you have to fast and they'll ask you if you have any past medical history, if you take any current medications that could you know complicate the anaesthetics and things like that. And then I will go to the hospital um, and get admitted from the nurses there. I'll hop into a gown and then they'll take me through and put me to sleep. So I will film as much as I can at the hospital for you. Um, I don't know how I'll be feeling. Um, I might forget or I might be nervous, but I'm excited. So I can't wait. So um, just been admitted and waiting to go in. Here we go. Wave Craig. Yep. Mativa <laughs> ERSF 295. Best So there's a little vessel there, it's always there, we know it's there, so we'll do is look for it, find it, and we buzz it for it day. We should have minimal night bleeding. The aim is really just to gently give a bit of the pick made, the pick made original, but without going to the fascia. We want to preserve the fascia so that in the long term, in 
plans will stay in place and there won't be any problem here. What Kate means is make enough room for your plant, but keep this crease intact. It's a problem if you, <clears throat> by lowering, if you lower the implant too much, then you disrupt the support and then over time the implant will come down and get what's called bottoming out. So we can largely avoid that in several ways. One is by not disrupting the anatomy and secondly, just put that tag so she doesn't say it. So with all of this, it's not a no-touch technique. We try and make it a minimal touch technique. So this is a Kel tunnel. Just make sure it's nice and slippery, you can see the implant sitting in there. That's the back, that's the front. Just make sure that it's going to come out easily. So it's a careful three layer closure. So the first layer, we are both stitched to the same rib, so we've got the same level. And it's two or three stitches. The intermediate layer, and then the, sub, the last layer. I'm actually going to put three in the intermediate because I still have a little bit of gap there. So what I tell all my patients is the result they'll get, as is true of life, depends on three factors, what they have to start with, what's added and how the adding's done. So if I have someone who's got a perfectly late 10 year old breast, we put a nice small implant in. Uh, can I give it a needle back, just careful? Then we're likely to get a good result. If someone's had seven children and they've breasted down to their belly button, doesn't mean we can't do things, but just being realistic. Okay, so um, the root notes are, so Breast augmentation mammoplasty and noted very mild asymmetry, which was noted prior to surgery. Inframammary crease incision, so inframammary means infra below, mammary is breast, crease is crease, so inframammary in the crease. Nipple to inframammary crease is six and a half centimetres, so I actually lower the left one by about two millimetres, so they're exactly the same. So we've got the same distance because we can put that scar wherever we want to and then we can lift it and put it onto the rib. So we want that distance to be the same and the same level. Subpectral pockets are under the muscle because it's safer and better. Uh, use better than packs so it was nice and sterile so we minimise infection in the short term, again the long term. Uh, Keller funnel, that was that special introducer and that means that we can have a less touch of the actual implant or I have to touch it a little bit. No trauma to the implant. The main thing is not the implant not touching the skin as it goes in. The implant used was an ERSF, so that's a Mativa ergonomic, that's a very soft implant, responsive, soft touch, full profile, 295cc, and that's silicon. And noted we sat her up. I had to do some small adjustments to good apparent symmetry, so it wasn't perfect to start with, but at the end it looked, I thought it looked really nice. And then the closure was deep intermediate and subcutaneous monocrawl. So the deep repair was repairing the fascia down to the ribs, so that's very solid and strong to keep the position. Intermediate, to, so you have no tension on the skin. And subcuticular, that's that very dissolving stitch just underneath the skin. All of those are dissolving sutures, so they'll dissolve over the next little while. Um, and she'll have to wear a good bra. And as I tell all my patients, uh, Post-operatively, they can just can take it quietly for a day or so, but tomorrow she can have a shower, she can wash her hair, she can have a cup of tea, and as long as she never drinks alcohol, never goes out, does everything her mother says, and never enjoys herself, she'll be fine. Oh, what a relief, the surgery. She's been on the ward um, for a few hours now. Um, no nausea, no pain, eating, drinking, really comfortable. Um, couldn't be happier. So my favourite people in the whole entire world have come to visit me. What are you doing in there? Chilling. My beautiful flowers. And even better, my card from Charlotte. So it's early in the morning. Um, unfortunately, I didn't sleep at all. Um, not because of pain or anything, but just because I couldn't get comfortable on my back. Um, excuse my fake tan, by the way, it's so horrendous. Um, but yeah, I'm really, like, I'm really comfortable, so it should be a good day. Hey guys, so it is day two, and oh my god, I am honestly so surprised at how well I'm doing. I don't know if I have a high pain tolerance or, you know, if... You know, it's going to get worse over the next few days, but 
I'm doing really well. My pain is actually, you know, really, really well managed with just some Panadol and anti-inflammatories. I don't know, I think maybe also because I'm super, super excited, you know, I am not noticing the pain as much or I don't know, it could get worse, but so far I'm doing really, really well. I've had friends that I've spoken to that have had theirs done and they're like, I can't even wash my hair or, you know, I can't lift my arms up. It's so uncomfortable and tight. So I'm shocked at how well I'm doing. So I have been taking stronger painkillers before bed, but during the day I've been managing just on Panadol and anti-inflammatories, which is so good because sometimes strong painkillers can make you feel a little bit, you know, average, a little bit drowsy. So if I can keep them to a minimum, I will be super happy. Like I can lift my arms up and everything like it feels tight like sort of heaviness on my chest but it's nothing that's you know unbearable like I'm not super like I'm not you know super super comfortable but I can sit here and watch TV and it's not really bothering me so I'm really happy about that I was discharged from hospital Yesterday morning, the care that I received at the hospital was so good. Um, the nurses were frequently coming into my room, checking on me, checking, you know, my vital signs, um, checking my dressings, making sure that, you know, I was comfortable, I wasn't hungry, like, they were awesome. Um, really, really good experience. I saw the pharmacist who gave me some medications to take home, um, explained them all to me, and then... Um, one of the nurses from Craig's rooms came in and she also, you know, checked my dressings, checked my breasts, made sure I was comfortable. So I feel like I had such good care from everyone. So that was really, really awesome. Craig also sent me home with a little box of goodies. Um, it had two soft crop tops in it that I will wear for the next week before I get my proper sports bar at my post-op appointment. And it also had some like, you know, green tea um, for nausea, um, some probiotics, which helps with, you know, thrush because I'll be taking antibiotics um, and gut health. Um, it had some arnica, which are a natural, you know, tablet that helps with um, bruising and swelling. Um, and it had like some other few, you know, little bits and pieces in it. So that was a really nice touch. Um, so I'm just chilling here on the couch um, I'm going to do this for the next few days, just really take care of myself, but yeah, I'm actually really enjoying the time off just to relax because I feel like I have the busiest lifestyle, so I never really get time to just chill and watch TV, so I'm loving it so far. Um, yeah, they will drop and settle and look more natural, but to be honest, like I love them already. <laughs> um, so yes, I will check back in with you guys in a few days, but so far so good. Hey guys, so it is day four and I'm going to be completely honest with you. I feel pretty average. Um, I wouldn't say that I am in pain though. I would say that it is discomfort and tightness. I have started taking some stronger painkillers, um, which are helping, but they do, again, make you feel sort of drowsy and a bit yuck. Um, but yeah, like, if you have to take them, you have to take them. Like, they're there for a reason. I'm still able to wash my hair and lift my arms up. I'm probably just being a little bit of a sook, but I think I'm also just getting a little bit tired because I'm not sleeping that well on my back. But, you know, it's all going to be worth it. I want to be honest with you guys. So that's where I'm at. In saying that, I am doing Hayden's niece's dancing concert makeup in about an hour. And then I'm going to her dancing concert. And then I'm going to go out for lunch with his family. So, you know, if I was seriously, seriously uncomfortable or in agony, I wouldn't be able to do that. So I think, you know, the fact that I'm getting out of the house and doing something... One, that'll distract me, but two, like, I'm obviously not that bad. So I think I'm just feeling a little bit sorry for myself right now, but, you know, it'll only get better from here. 
So guys, it is one week today. Um, I'm being a little bit dramatic. Um, I'm a little bit sore and over it at the moment, but it's definitely improving. So day three and four were pretty tough. Um, you know, I had to take strong painkillers. Um, I slept most of the day, um, just felt a bit yuck and a bit tight and uncomfortable, but it is improving. So that is awesome. So I've just had my one week appointment with Craig's nurse. Um, they were so happy with how everything went. Um, I also quickly saw Craig and he was also super happy with how they were looking and so am I. Um, they took down the dressings, gave them a bit of a clean and then they put some brown tape over it which is supposed to help with the scarring. So I will tape it for the next few weeks. Um, it takes the tension off the scar for a better result. Um, I also got fitted for a sports bra so I've swapped out of my soft crop top to the sports bra which I will wear every single day. Um, so I made an appointment to come and see Craig at the eight week mark. Um, obviously if I have any concerns or need to see him before then I can absolutely make another appointment but if all continues to go well um, I won't have to see him till then. So checking back in with you guys it is the four week mark. Um, I'm so happy with my result honestly I feel like they have dropped and settled so nicely um, I am able to wear normal clothes now um, they look so good as you can tell I am wearing my post-op bra Craig is super strict on this he says you know it is so important to have the right support um, every day if you can wear a support bra and then you know when you go out on the weekends you can you know wear whatever you want I know probably down the track I'll start wearing more underwire bras but I'm trying to be really good at the moment so I'm wearing this one. So my next appointment with Craig is at the eight week mark so I will check back in with you then but yeah I don't really have too much more to say I feel like I'm honestly all healed now. Okay everybody so checking in for the last time um, it is the eight week mark so I am completely healed and I am so happy honestly my result is exactly what I was hoping for I'm so so happy with the size um, I think they are absolutely perfect for my frame I honestly feel so much more confident um, especially when I'm in you know things like this and bikinis I just feel like I look so much more feminine and I just feel 110% more confident than I was before. Honestly, the whole experience was so good. It was so much better than I was expecting. Um, to be completely honest, day three and four were the hardest. Um, I had to take strong painkillers on those days um, and sort of just slept the whole time. But after that, it got so much better so quickly. I was able to wash my hair the whole time you know, I could lift my arms up and move around. So I've been using brown paper micropore tape over my scars. Um, this is supposed to reduce the tension and improve your result. I've also religiously been wearing my post-op bra, um, as Craig recommends. Um, you know, when I'm wearing things like this or going out, obviously I don't, but under my work uniform every day I have been. Um, I just, you know, I want the best result possible. Like if I'm gonna, you know, have surgery and do all this, I may as well do it right. So I only need to do it once. <laughs> so after my operation, um, I only took a week and a half off work. Um, I was able to go back, you know, lift things, put my arms up and everything. And then at about six weeks, I was able to resume all, you know, normal activity like exercising and things like that. I've been getting so many compliments. Um, every time I go out, you know, people tell me how good they look. Honestly, I could not be happier with my whole experience. Um, I could not recommend Craig more highly. He is honestly the best for breasts and tummies. Honestly, I am so, so thankful to Craig for looking after me so well um, and giving me such a beautiful result. If you are considering getting breast augmentation and you have any questions that I haven't, you know, answered or there's anything that I haven't gone through in this video, 
please, please feel free to message me. You know, plastic surgery is my passion. I work in the field. It's something that I really, really love. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. If I get a few questions, I might make a video answering them. So if you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I have absolutely loved filming this, putting it all together, and I hope that you know it was interesting and beneficial to you guys. Um, thank you so, so much for watching, and I hope to see you in another video soon. Thank you guys. Bye.